let's tell the truth. Religion, Christianity included, has done nothing to advance humanity for the better. Yeah, so this is just dead wrong, actually. Uh, I think you'd be surprised what historians have to say about this and what the data actually has to show. For instance, let's see what an agnostic historian named Tom Holland has to say about this. Lengthy <laughs> amount of writing, but compacted into this very, very small amount of writing was almost everything that explains the modern world. Well, the and, Western and, and world, as we take for granted. The, the, yeah. Yes, yeah. but also the way that the West has then moved on to shape, you know, concepts like international law, for instance. So the, 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 the fact, the ba you know, concepts of human rights, all these kind of things. Ultimately, they don't go back to Greek philosophers. They don't go back to Roman imperialism. They, re they go back to Paul. Some and of Paul, the Paul really and is, you know, I, his letters, his yeah. letters, I think, are, along with the, 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 the four Gospels, the most influential, the most impactful, the most revolutionary writings that have emerged from you, you, the ancient and, and world. Dr. Philip Mitchell, who is a professor of social sciences, in his book, Seven Ideas That Changed the World, demonstrates that Christianity is actually what gave rise to things like the sanctity of life, the value of women, ministries of compassion, social justice, free will, sexual ethics, scientific development being rooted within Christianity and technology. And on page 23 of the book Dominion by Holland, he endorses this idea and then writes, to live in a Western country is to live in a society saturated by Christian concepts and assumptions. For example, let's see what Holland says about sexual ethics. The sexual order before the coming of Christianity had assumed that any man in a position of power had the right to exploit his inferiors. But then Christianity recast this view. Never before had any attempt to recalibrate sexual morality been attempted on such a scale. Never before had one enjoyed such total success. You see, the church taught that a man had control over his sexual impulses because he had been given the power of free will, which was yet another revolutionary idea. A wife had always been expected to be faithful to her husband. Now, Christians are arguing that God expected the same from men, that a husband must be faithful to his wife. The Romans and Greeks would have argued that such a command would require a heroic degree of self-denial. Along with this was another revolutionary concept. The individual, not the patriarch, determined whether or not to enter into marriage. Opening up, before the <clears throat> opening up before the Christian people was the path to a radical new conception of marriage, one founded on mutual attraction and love. Holland devotes the last section of this chapter to the medieval attitude towards sexual deviancy. Prostitution was decried. But it was also clear within Christian teaching that they were to be treated with compassion and could attain forgiveness. While before the onset of Christianity, prostitutes were just looked at as property and objectified. What about human rights? Universities were the creation of the high middle ages. The idea arose that all souls were equal in the sight of God, and only from this theological assumption could true justice arise. The concept of human rights began to take shape. This era produced giants like Peter Abelard, who devoted his life to promoting the idea that God's order was rational and governed by rules. In the era of Barolemio del Casas, the great defender of the native, he preached that Christian doctrine of sanctity of life. Lacassus declared that all human beings, pagan or not, had been endowed by God with a spark of reason. Every mortal, Christian or not, had rights that derived from God. Lacassus called them human rights. What about science? One common thing you'll hear is the story of Galileo, but you'll always hear a twisted version that originated from Andrew White's propaganda piece on the war of Christianity on science. Holland says, The battle was really over Aristotle and to what extent Christian theologians should defend his cosmology. In the end, the heliocentric universe won out through the efforts of many Christian scholars, not just Galileo, and Galileo foresaw a future of increased scientific understanding. But make no mistake, all those going forward into solving the great scientific mysteries had one constant. They all had their origins in Christendom. 
in the 19th century, we start seeing even more development than science. Darwin came along with a theory of evolution and seemed to have challenged the Christian doctrine of creation. According to Darwin's Bulldog by Thomas Huxley, it was only by stepping over the corpses of extinguished theologians that humanity would be able to leave delusion behind. Science had always existed. The Greeks were off to a good start, but Christianity got in the way and scuttled progress. Holland observes that nothing in this narrative was true did not prevent it from becoming a wildly popular myth. What about medical science? David Hutchings, a British physicist and... James C. Ugrunu, a historian of science and religion, wrote a book named Of Popes and Unicorns, Science and Christianity and How the Conflict Thesis Fooled the World. In this book, they highlight a few things. The church was largely a source of medical innovation rather than an obstacle. The Library of Alexandria was not burnt to the ground by Christian fanatics. Pope Calixtus III did not attempt to excommunicate Halley's Comet. Surprisingly, they, along with many other historians, historians of science, philosophers, and many other professionals in different degrees of study, all agree that the onset of scientific discovery was motivated by Christian thought. Paul Dickin, a philosopher, writes, The dark ages were not very dark. Indeed, the Christian conviction, the man was created in God's image and thus had the capacity to understand his divine creation, was a principal motivation behind early scientific investigation. So not only are these tropes, we hear about Christianity not giving humanity anything, a complete myth, ironically, but actually most of what we take for granted today, we have the outset of Christianity to thank. 